This narration goes along with chapter 10 on cell reproduction. So to illustrate the, part, the process of cell division, they start by looking at a sea urchin. A sea urchin is a simple animal that reproduces sexually. So you have a fertilized egg that divides, and now you have two identical cells. They divide again and again until you have 16 identical cells. Eventually, they start specializing into the nervous system and the gastrointestinal system until you have a mature sea urchin with spines on the outside. So this will talk about how cells grow and divide into identical cells. Let's see what you already know about cell division and especially about the DNA within the cell. The electron micrograph above shows, okay, so here's a structure, it's narrow in the middle at the waist, and there are two separate structures attached together, and it represents one chromosome consisting of sister chromatids connected in the middle. Okay, same picture, but a little smaller. The electron micrograph above has blank of DNA compared to a cell not divided. Okay, twice the amount after DNA replication, the chromosome winds up in these two identical halves called sister chromatids. So it's considered one chromosome built of two attached sister chromatids. Okay. And finally, here are two structures labeled X and Y. The structures above mark X and Y are, okay, so now you have a homologous pair of chromosomes, one for mom, one from dad, and each of the homologous pair of chromosomes has twice the normal amount of DNA consisting of sister chromatids. Okay, so the answer is A. X and Y are a homologous pair of chromosomes. Uh, watch the mitosis video from the amoeba sisters, and it will talk about cell division to make identical cells. In multicellular organisms, the purpose of cell division is growth, like we saw in the serotonin, and repair of damaged tissue. Uh, single cell organisms use cell division to reproduce. So you'll go from one amoeba to two amoebas, from one bacteria to two bacteria. Okay, here's a bacteria, and it's saying it's really important when cells divide that they reproduce the DNA. The DNA has all the information that tells you that this is a bacteria. Okay, all the information in the DNA is called the genome. And bacteria have one piece of DNA. It's circular. If you unwound it, it would be like a piece of string tied together. And this one piece of DNA is called a chromosome. In eukaryotes, unlike the prokaryotic bacteria, we have different numbers of chromosomes. So here's an onion. Onions have 16 chromosomes. We'll only focus on diploid organisms when we talk about eukaryotes this semester. Diploids have two of every kind of chromosome, one from mom, one from dad. So onions happen to have 16 chromosomes. Sometimes they're in the middle and you can see they're still in the nucleus and the nucleus looks round. Okay, when the cells are getting ready to divide, all the DNA winds up into these condensed chromosomes. And you can see they're separate now. They're not just a round circle. The nuclear envelope disappears. And then these chromosomes separate. So you get identical DNA in each of the new cells that form. So the chromosome number is unique to the species. So humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 pair. Onions have 16 chromosomes, eight pair, and yeast have 32 chromosomes, 16 pair. Here is a chromosome display. So here are all the chromosomes in the nucleus. Here are the chromosomes, and they've added a fluorescent dye to tag them all differently. And now they've matched the chromosome in pairs. So this is a human female. X represents the sex chromosome, so human female is XX. 
In the other 22 pairs, they've paired up each of the chromosomes, and they line them up from larger chromosomes to smaller chromosomes. So uh, our body cells have two matched sets of chromosomes and are called diploid. Uh, gametes, egg and sperm, only have one of every kind of chromosomes. So in humans, our gametes have 23 chromosomes. And the gametes are haploid. Haploid means one, as opposed to diploid, which means two. Uh, when the chromosomes are displayed in a carrier type, they're displayed in these pairs called homologous pairs. Homologous pairs are the same size, they're the same shape. They contain genes coding for the same traits, but they're not identical because for every pair, one came from dad and one came from mom. Mm -hmm. So dad gave you a gene for eye color, but it may or may not be like mom's gene for eye color. Dad gave you a gene for uh, growth hormone, it may be or may not be like mom gene for growth hormone. Okay, DNA, if you stretched it out, it would be three meters long in every one of our cells. And so it's wrapped up really tightly within the nucleus. So here's DNA, and it's wrapped around a protein called a histone protein. And so here's uh, coming out farther, you can see it looks like thread wrapped around spools. So that's the analogy people give. They say DNA is wrapped around histone proteins the same way thread in your sewing kit is wrapped around a spool. When you have DNA wrapped around these proteins, together they call it chromatin. And finally it gets wrapped up further until finally you see these duplicated chromosomes uh, during mitosis. Okay, the cell cycle is a process of cell division going from one cell to two cells. 90% of the cell cycle is in what's called interphase. Interphase is broken up into gap one, gap two, and DNA synthesis. 10% of interphase is what's called the mitotic phase. It's the division of the DNA in the nucleus, and it's splitting up the cytoplasm within the cell. And this just emphasizes that by showing interphase in blue and then mitosis in red. So even though we'll focus on mitosis when the DNA is actively dividing the nucleus, most of the time in cell division is in interphase. And interphase, the cell's very biochemically active, it's growing. So you wouldn't be able to divide, divide, divide without a stage in between where you're making more protein and making more DNA and making all the kind of things that cells need, replicating the organelles. S phase is for synthesis, that's when the DNA divides. And then the gap two is organelle reproduction and more protein synthesis. Okay, so biochemically, the interphase part of the cell cycle is very active, although you don't see changes going on in the nucleus. Um, a lot of high school teachers like to emphasize mitosis because it's an easy thing to study. You can put slides under a microscope and see stuff going on in the nucleus. Okay, so cells in interphase, they, the nucleus is intact. Sometimes you can see a darker area within the nucleus called the nucleolus. That's where ribosomes are made. And then you can see the outside of the cell in plant cells the boxy outside represents the cell wall. Okay. Once the DNA gets replicated, it starts winding up or condensing, and you start to see a lot of white in between. That's called prophase. And then protein rods called chromatids put it into the middle of the cell. Meta means middle, that's metaphase. And then the chromatids are separated, they're pulled apart by these rods, during anaphase. Okay, so the different phases are labeled here. We'll refer to uh, this nuclear division as mitosis, although your book also calls it karyokinesis. Mitosis is used more often. Okay, and then the second part, after the nuclear material divides, after the DNA divides, you get cytokinesis. 
So in animal cells, the cell just pinches in two, uh, the nucleus reforms. Now you have two cells, both identical to the original cell. All right, so this goes through the phases of mitosis. And your book says prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis. Okay, we will combine prophase and prometaphase. We'll call them both prophase. And then metaphase is the middle, anaphase is the most dramatic, and telophase is the last phase, and then cytokinesis comes after mitosis. Okay, so let's go through some of the things that happen, happen in different phases. So in prophase, the nuclear envelope breaks down, the nucleolus disappears, and spindle fibers begin to form. Okay. Uh, in late prophase, what they call prometaphase, spindle fibers attach to the centromere, that's the narrow waist in the middle that's holding the chromatids together, and there are special proteins on that region called kinetochore proteins. And protein rods attach to that because they're going to separate these two identical sister chromatids. In metaphase, meta means middle. The chromosomes line up in the middle. They're pushed and pulled there by the spindle fibers, by the microtubules that have attached to the centromere. And these structures at the end are called centrosomes. They look kind of like T's. And the microtubules organize themselves along the centrosomes. These blue structures are what are going to push and pull the chromosomes apart. Anaphase is a very short phase, but it's very dramatic. And in anaphase, the chromatids separate. And when the chromatids separate and move along these spindle fibers, now you've gone from one chromosome consisting, consisting of identical sister chromatids to two separate chromosomes. And finally, in telophase, the uh, nuclear envelope reforms, and then the DNA unwinds, and now you have two nuclei. It's for an instant, but then the cytoplasm is going to split after mitosis and cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is showing in uh, animal cells. It's a ring of proteins that uh, forms a cleavage furrow, and then you split up the cytoplasm. So in other words, there'll be some mitochondria in both cells, some ER in both cells. The organelles will split between the two cells. Okay. In plant cells, because they have the cell wall, instead they form a flat cell plate between the two, and they split that way with a cell plate in between. All right, you can watch the process of mitosis in a very nice video for six minutes. And so this just focuses on mitosis. It doesn't go through all of cell division. Okay, what makes the cell cycle go? What, what makes cells divide? So there can be external triggers like release of growth hormone. They, there can be things that stop cells from dividing, like cell crowding. So cells will sense other cells around them and stop dividing. There are internal checkpoints to make sure everything's happening OK. okay at the end of GAP1, there's what's called a GAP1 checkpoint, which checks for DNA mutations. At the end of GAP2, there's a G2 checkpoint, which checks to make sure chromosome duplication happened okay. And in the middle of mitosis, there's a uh, checkpoint that makes sure that the spindle fibers are attached appropriately. Okay, so at the G1 checkpoint, it's looking for things like growth factors. It's looking for cell size and protein reserves. It's looking for DNA damage. Okay, if it doesn't meet all those requirements, it won't let it enter S phase. Either it stops the cycle and tries to fix the problem, or it waits for signs that conditions are better. Okay, G2 checkpoint. Uh, again, look at cell size, look at protein reserves. Uh, make sure chromosomes dupl duplicate appropriately. 
If not, you may have to wait for uh, DNA replication to be completed, or you may have to try to repair the damaged DNA. And finally, the mitosis checkpoint. See if chromatids are ready to separate. Okay. See if the spindle fibers are appropriately grabbing on to the centromere in the middle. And if you don't, you could have a problem with chromatids failing to separate. We'll come back to that later when we talk about genetics. Okay, there are positive chemicals that promote movement to the next start step of the cell cycle. There are negative chemicals that say, hey, stop the cell cycle right now. And there's a compound called, called cyclin. And you can see where the word comes from. It's a cycle. The amount of cyclin increases. And you can see at different phases, it goes up and goes down. There are different kinds of cyclin. Uh, some of them uh, correspond perfectly to different phases. So this green cyclin, cyclin E, peaks right when you go from G1 phase to S phase. Cyclin A peaks right before S phase goes to G2. And then cyclin B peaks as you go from G2 into mitosis. So these are the proteins that are positive regulators to tell the cycle to go on to the next uh, part. Okay, there are proteins called cyclin dependent kinases that regulate the increase in cell division. These are enzymes. And when they're activated, they have phosphate groups attached. And so the phosphate groups attach phosphate groups to a target protein. And when the target protein has a phosphate group attached, it changes its shape and it tells the cycle to advance. So we saw this in the cell communication lab that it's pretty common for cells to send signals by adding phosphate groups to proteins which alter their shape and that's why, what these uh, cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes do. So the RB protein uh, suppresses cell growth by binding this E2F factor. When E2F factor is bound, the gene is turned off. When phosphorylation occurs on the RB protein, these phosphate groups are added, the E2F protein is released, and protein synthesis occurs and cell growth continues. Cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. So one of the reasons why people want to understand cell division is to understand how cancer happens. So cancer happens either with a DNA mutation that we're born with or a DNA mutation that's caused by environmental damage like being out in the sun too much or smoking too many cigarettes. In either case, when you get DNA damage, the protein that's built from that DNA is faulty, and then the tumor result results from uh, this faulty protein. Or you can look at the amoeba sisters and learn about the cell cycle and cancer. So P53 is a, a tumor suppressor protein. And it goes around looking for DNA damage. If it finds DNA damage, then it stops the cell cycle. It repairs the DNA or tries to repair the DNA and lets the cell cycle restart. Or it tells the cell, uh, uh, it can't seem to fix it, go through apoptosis and kill yourself. The apoptosis is programmed cell death. Okay, sometimes the gene that codes for P53 itself is faulty. And in about half of all cancers, the P53 gene isn't working. So there's DNA damage. The P53 protein doesn't see it because the P53 gene has been damaged. And so the cell cycle continues, even though there was DNA damage in that cell cycle, and those cells become cancerous. So that mutated P53 gene is not producing the correct protein. And that, and that mutated protein now can't stop cell division. Okay, so even though this process has been known for over 100 years, it's still a very active area of study. So in terms of positive regulators, 
wouldn't it be nice if you had a spinal cord injury and the doctor could just inject embryonic stem cells and inject the right factors that would program, program them to grow new nerve cells and rec reconnect your spinal cord. Okay, in terms of negative regulators, wouldn't it be nice if you had cancer and the doc could inject factors to stop those cancer cells from replicating? Okay, so as you can imagine, the process of mitosis didn't happen all at once and prokaryotic cells like bacteria do division very differently. So one of the essential things about life is cells divide and bacteria replicate the single circular chromosome. So now you have two chromosomes and the cell simply pinches in two and you have two new cells. So bacteria cells reproduce by cell division, a process called binary fission. So if you look at table 10.3, it will talk about cell division in different kinds of organisms besides bacteria that do binary fission and besides uh, animal cells that do mitosis like we discussed. And so an example of something that does mitosis a little differently is brewer's yeast, which we've looked at in lab. Uh, and brewer's yeast, when it divides, it keeps the nucleus intact and it separates the chromatids within the nuclear envelope and then separates the nuclear envelope in two. So there are organisms such as yeast that do mitosis, but in a different way than animal cells. So what's that saying? That's saying you didn't go from binary fission to the animal cell type of mitosis overnight that there were a lot of in-between steps and there are still animals, or not animals, there are still organisms out there like single cell protease and yeast that do these in-between forms of mitosis. And it's an example of locked in place some of these steps that had to happen before you got to the current way that uh, the pathway of mitosis runs in animal cells.